I am Jens, and welcome back to Faster Than Light. If you uh, remember from the last episode, there was a horrible explosion aboard the SS Microwave, and everyone died. There were no survivors. Uh, so we're going to start again with a new playthrough, a new ship, a new crew. And, um, well, I've played this quite a bit since the last time. I've unlocked a lot of new ships and a couple of... Uh, layout like type B's um, but I think for this episode we're gonna do the the Taurus the type uh, a layout for the NG ship um, and the reason for this is just that I, I think it's a really good ship I think it's very powerful um, and yeah so we're gonna go for the Taurus and we're gonna see how far we can get but we need a, a new name uh, for this ship how about the, uh, the spaceship? Hmm, it's a bunch of robots, right? Because the NG are robots. They're kind of like robotic life forms. Um, <laughs> the, the SS zip folder. Because that's, um, that's, that, that's actually how, uh, the, the message for, uh, the message to the, the Federation that exploits the weakness uh, telling them how to exploit the weakness of the rebels is being sent. It's in a zip folder. Uh, it's compressed. It's got a really weird uh, name that people won't recognize. You know how you like sometimes if you have sensitive information in a folder and you don't want like your dad to find it, you kind of like name it something like cat pictures. Well, uh, the folder with the uh, the special message for the Federation. It's called cat pictures. Uh, so this is the S zip, zip folder. We've got uh, our crew. We've got Emma, Scoops, and Block. Emma! Oh, back from, like, the first one. We've got Emma back. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's the same Emma, but we have a Emma. Anyway, let's get started. Um, the data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before building up to move on, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Uh, we're going to the end of the universe to, well, the end of the galaxy to get stuff to people over there. Uh, you arrive in the system to see a pirate ship pursuing a civilian ship. You detect messages from the civilian ship on a distress frequency. Okay, let's aid the ship. I like these because you get a lot of free stuff from them. So we're going to activate our Ion Blast Mark II. We're going to actually set this to auto-fire onto their weapons. Uh, I think that's... Like, auto-fire, like, that's one of the things that I love about, like, the NG ships, is that, like, you don't have to do anything, you just, like, get it started, uh, turn the auto-fire on, put the drones working, and just kind of watch them do stuff. So, um, in our ship, actually, you know, while we're in mid-combat, I think we need to think about who these people are, and what stations they should be on. This is an NG ship. This isn't a Federation ship, and so the Federation officer that's assigned to, like, carry the, the folder that has, a, 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 like, a USB strip, uh, like a USB flash drive, uh, with the zip folder for the stuff, uh, she carries that, like, it's Emma, and she has it around her neck. Um, but she's not, she's not gonna be driving. In fact, we're gonna put her into the engine room, and we're gonna put Scoops as the new captain for the ship. And the reason for that is that... The NG ships have a very particular uh, sort of power source. They don't use like your regular, um, you know, like like on the Crestle on the Federation ships where they have like that big furnace that you dump like a bunch of coal into to make it run. Uh, they actually just have a treadmill, and um, it doesn't like you can't have one of the NGs working the treadmill because if you do then the according to like the law of like one of the laws of thermodynamics i don't remember which one you're just going to lose a lot of your energy because they are robotic life forms um and therefore they uh like as robotic life forms they like have this you know a cord that plugs into their butts and they just plug into the ship and they draw their power from the ship like that's how uh, like instead of eating like humans do to get our uh you know power uh they just plug into the ship and so if you have them walking on the treadmill to power the ship according to one of the laws of thermodynamics some of that energy is just going to get wasted uh as you know like you know they're walking and maybe the uh 
they're not like perfectly lubed up in their you know leg areas and so they kind of you know there's friction and heat generated and that's just wasted energy uh that's not going in that the ship put into them that they're not putting back into the ship and so instead what we have is emma in the engine room and she's walking on the treadmill and there's like this conveyor belt of like pizzas and donuts and freaking vindaloos that are just coming around and she's just walking on the treadmill the entire time and eating food and converting all of those calories into energy for the ship uh and energy that the uh the engines ultimately um ultimately used to power themselves and so that's how uh the that's how the power system aboard the ss uh vortex works it's uh, emma who has sort of you know graduated from shoveling coal in a previous series to um well i guess in a previous lifetime really uh because this is not the same universe it can't be the same universe uh that she previously came in because the rebels took out the ship in that in that universe and everyone she died so this is a totally different universe totally different but exactly the same emma um and she's walking on the treadmill instead of doing the the coal uh shoveling which is great uh it's really helpful um it's good that she's moving up in the world uh, oh, um, but now she's got a fire deal. I think she's fine. Um, oh, they're trying to surrender. Um, three scrap, one drone part, and nine... Uh, three fuel, uh, one drone, and, uh, nine scrap. Um, no, I'm not gonna... I'm not. I, I'd rather just get more scrap so that we can put it into our, uh... Put it into our systems. We want to... We've got a breach laser... Uh, a breach missile and a burst laser that, I guess... We've picked up, and I haven't been paying attention to any of the dialogue that's happened. Um, but those require a lot of th those will require a lot of power into our weapon system and power into our generator. Oh wow, weapon! Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is insane. Um, wow, I. Weapon pre-igniter is very strong. Like, this run is going amazingly well. I'm just talking about um, freaking this ridiculous power system for the spaceship, and the game is giving me this amazing random number generation to give me like a bunch of really high tier weapons. That I mean, they're in-game weapons. They gave me. A, a pre-igniter weapons are made av immediately available uh, after a jump so wow what if I were to um find a way to get the burst laser mark 3 uh, going Let's see how much scrap do I have I would need one more weapon and yeah I can do that oh my gosh okay <laughs> let's do that we're gonna use the burst laser, and it's gonna be pre-ignited, and we're just gonna be able to uh, hit everything. Oh, uh, you consider your options: simply fire on the defense system. From sh I should be reading this stuff. Um, I've just been guessing this entire time. <laughs> okay, NG crew, remotely. Uh, yeah, let's remotely repair. Oh my, coal smasher laser. What is with? Oh my gosh. I, 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 I don't even know what to do. Um, right now. Um, I guess, uh, I, I, I have been very lucky with the weapons that I've been getting. <laughs> I assume that I can sell some of these things? Let's, uh, aid the, okay, so you come out of the jump to see, uh, laser blast coming from the other side of the beacon. It looks like someone is under attack from pirates. Aid the civilian ship. Okay. So this is why this is amazing. I can just... Bam. Oh my gosh! How many shots was that? <laughs> it was like five laser blasts that just... destroyed his shields. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, and now we're getting another, uh, another NG, which really is unfortunate for Emma, because it means that she's going to have to eat even more to produce the calories to not only power everything on the ship, but also this new, uh, crew member, Shirari. 
Okay, let's uh, let's get another jump in. Um, okay, so they're here. The, the rebels are coming in. We don't have a, a ton of time, uh, but there's only one place that we can get to the exit from. So I guess we'll we'll jump here and then just around and see where we can get to uh, before the rebels get to us. Uh, but can we jump as we can? Here we go. Um, uh, so we're just gonna use the burst laser under their weapons and activate our good friend the salt droid. This is ridiculous. This is so rid they're, they're not going to deal any damage to us because they've got a uh, beam drum that can't get through our shields and we just knocked their missile out straight away. Um, this is kind of insane. This is kind of really overpowered. Um... <laughs> I guess maybe I should stop wasting my drones because... As long as I have this, and this is the first sector. I'm just wrecking everything. Okay, let's go to the store. We can get a. Do we want to go to the store? We can get a bunch of crap selling because we have way more stuff than we can use. We can get a lot of scrap selling like breach missiles and whole lasers and whatnot. Um. Oh. Okay. Let's go. Uh, we're gonna sell the breach missile. Uh, which gives us 32. Do you want to sell a hole laser? Powerful laser designed to maximize hole damage. Um, I don't think we do. Uh, well, how much power does it require? It's two? Hmm. I don't think we need this. I'm going to just get rid of it. Uh, I'd rather have the scrap. And then... Like, for now... Yeah, I don't think we need any of these things. I think we're really strong as it is, and we should just focus on upgrading our ship. Uh, if we can get the Ion Blast to run simultaneously with the Burst Laser and a Combat Drone, we're just going to be able to stomp everything. So, let's go for that. <laughs> um, we'll take a few more jumps. We don't need to upgrade straight, straight away. We can... Uh, jump around, get to the end, maybe look at the next sector and see if there's a store nearby uh, and upgrade then. But, wow. Uh, I just feel like I've received this incredible blessing <laughs> by the RNG gods of a Burst Laser Mark III that shoots five times and a weapon pre-igniter. Like, I don't even know what to say at this point. I guess I should be talking about uh, Emma and all the vindaloo she's eating. Um, but who else do we have on our ship? We've got Scoops, who is the commander of this NG vessel, Bloch, who does the weapons, and Shirei, Shirari, Shirei, yeah, Shirei, uh, who's doing the shields. We picked up Shirei. Uh, where did we pick up Shirei? I don't even remember. I'm just so dumbfounded. I'll, I'll look back on the video, and um, we can figure out where she came from. Oh, I'm not even shooting my burst laser. <laughs> That's... Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, let's come to... The Zoltan ship breaks apart, and you salvage what you can. Contact the refugee ship. The refugee ship, the refugee ship thanks you for your assistance as a gesture of goodwill, and seeing how effectively you dispatch the enemy ship, they offer what supplies they can spare. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that was very nice. Um, yeah, let's, uh, looks like we've got, yeah, we've got time, so let's, uh, jump to both of these things. Uh, you stumble across a rebel ship dis distributing supplies to local civ civilian colonies. It's probably not anything military grade, but every little bit helps. So, this is a more dilemma for our captain, uh, Mr. Scoot. Do we attack the rebels? Do we steal the supplies from the civilians? Like, what? You know, I feel like... I feel like the... You know, we can attack the rebels. They've already sent the supplies, so they've already got them. Um, I don't want to really hurt the, hurt the civilians because they didn't do anything. Uh, they're just appealing to the powers that be, which are the rebels um that's anyway that's what scoops says scoops is you know he's got this 
morality chip inserted in the back of his neck. Uh, but really, it says, you know, it's okay to kill rebels. They have done horrible things uh, to the Federation and to Ingies and Zoltans and Rocks and all sorts of uh, species that are non-human or non-correctly uh, aligned human. Uh, and so it is okay to do what we need to do, but the civilians, we're not going to steal from them because they're just civilians. You wonder if any more rebels will be available to help these civilians on the edge of nowhere. Of course they will! There is like this big line of like a thousand rebel ships that are closing in on me. They'll be here in like five minutes. Uh, okay, never mind. Oh well, uh, for you, a few more dead rebels matter more than the lives of a thousand colonies. I. Okay. Well, yeah, they're gonna be here in like two jumps. So. Just calm your butts, civilians. You've got your rebels on the way. Okay. You have jumped into the aftermath of what seems to have been a brutal exchange between several ships. Wreckage drifts by your screens, and you can still see the remains of the dying ships, sparking and breaking apart. It's hard to determine who the combatants were without closer investigation. Investigate the battlefield or ignore the wreckage. Well, we're going to investigate the battlefield because ignoring the wreckage is boring, and we're not in any position to need to run away from things. As you approach the wreckage, a slub ship makes its arrival. It hesitates for a moment, as if surprised to see anyone remaining, and then jumps away without a word. You resume scanning the system, wary of any other visitors. Uh, well, nothing happened. I, I guess a slug ship must have, uh, done some sort of sabotage, and then, you know, was surprised that anything survived. Here we go. You've arrived at a long-range beacon. When the fast and life drive is charged, you can jump to the next sexter. Sexter. Se sexter. Sector. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I, I guess the next sec sector is like the, the sex sector, the pleasure sector. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's just a bunch of, like, beautiful men and women ba we barely wearing any clothes, walking around and having wonderful sex uh, just with everyone. Doesn't matter what your gender is, what your religion, or your, you know, species is. If you want to go and have sex, just go to this next sex tour, and they're on it. Okay. You arrive near a damaged and dilapidated space station. It appears to be abandoned, but you detect faint life signatures on board. Um, you know, I, I don't think that... I want to board the station and look for survivors. I feel like we're in a really good place with the amount of crew we have and the amount of weapons we have. Let's just scrap some of the debris and carry on. Okay, we're gonna do... Okay, so that's it for this sector. Uh, that's it for this... Uh, let's see here. Um, the next sector... Oh! They're both rock controlled. <laughs> oh my. I guess they're both. I, I guess um, in this universe, the uh, rocks are basically just these magnificent sexual deviants, and uh, yeah, that that that's what happens. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. We have had a great random number generation. We've got a bunch of scrap, 176. That's a lot for the first sector, and we've got some very good uh, weapons in the first sector. So. Um, Thank you for watching, we'll be back next time, and we'll be going to the, uh, the, one of these rock sexual places, corners of the galaxy, where sex happens, uh, with rock people. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back next time!